Welcome to this segment of the Alexis K. Tyler Show. I don't want to completely do an AKT celebrity read tonight because I'm not going to get deep into a reading. I'm going to talk about some real issues. Um, this is a continuation. Excuse me, I dropped. Thank you, Jacretia, for sharing my video. I dropped my glove, and I had to get some new gloves. And uh, this is a continuation. Hey, old bookie. From the, I love you all too. Thank you. I love the hearts. I love the hearts. I'm just waiting for my tea. I'm gonna. I got on a jumper. Uh, you can see that. It's my little jumper. Um. Good evening. So we're we're still tonight, even though it's not directly uh, King Nip. Hey, Cheryl, how beautiful girl. King Nip Queen Drip is still peace up a town down the dirty south meets LA. I'm creeping and I'm dripping in this bitch. <laughs> I got what Crip Blue and Nipsey Gold. The name is the game is soul, not motherfucking toe. So, let me see. We're going to do some libations. I just want to really relax. Isn't that a beautiful glass? And let me show you that. Isn't that pretty? You see they match? It's absolutely gorgeous. You see blue and gold. Yeah, for blue and gold. And this is for, you know, the 24K gold. Actually, this jar is a little bit heavy. My creams are very thick and they're very rich. This is heavy. It's not mine. I was supposed to have it packed this morning, but I didn't have it ready. And thank you, Flex, um, the owner of this jar. Thank you. Isn't that gorgeous, Monica? I know you you like something like this. This is your style. She said I could put it in the show tonight. But she's like, are you going to send it tomorrow? I'm like, yeah, yes. Like, it's so pretty. I didn't want to send it to you. She's like, you better send me my stuff. So I don't know if you can see it. I got to take, let me see which one she ordered. Yeah, this is one. Can you see that? Isn't that beautiful? See if the light hits it. Yeah, maybe. Can you see it a little better? You see how thick and rich that is? You see it's not really moving. It's not really running. That's for the body. So I can let the light hit it. I don't know if you can see how gold and, and glittery it is. Yeah. So I just wanted to show you that to see how it matches the glass. Um... What I want to talk about, first I'm going to do libation. Let me see, I have, yeah, this is water. I'm going to do this uh, to Nipsey. And I have his candles lit. I'm going to do a libation for me. And he's been, he's been getting on me uh, about this topic for a couple of months now, and I didn't want to do it. I don't know if you saw my post about another person that stole the concept of vagina power from me and tried to market the vagina power. Um, Lauren's teacher. Okay. I told you I met her and I knew her from the past. And my vagina power concept and idea was plagiarized and stolen. She tried to take it and run with it. Basically used me. I'm not the only one that has had this same story. It was, it's been very painful for me for a lot of years. Uh, I just wanted you to see it so you can look at the date and the timing of it. Because as you know, I started my show in 2006 publicly. But I had had, thank you Felicia, the copyrights to that before I had the trademark to that. So there's like what, 2004, 2005, I started copywriting Vagina Power. So if you check my footwork... And you check what I did shows on, you will see that I've said this and I've taught the concept of vagina power and spiritual sexuality longer than Princess of Diamond and longer than Lauren's teacher. The person that had this concept, the oldest, is me. Now, I don't, I didn't really deal with this, but it's been hurting me for years. And Nipsey told me that I had to speak about this. And I had to deal with it. Why? Because it ties into showing credibility for what I said about these people that helped set him up. Why? Because it's some of the same people. If you really sit back and listen to what I've said, and the people that you see, the players that you see now, for all of us to see they're involved, 
you see that I know some of these same people that were around him and, and they're exploiting him in life and now in physical death. You, you see that? I mean, just sitting up and thinking about this, and I know you all didn't know I knew them. I wasn't really going to say anything about it until Nipsey came into my life. And he asked me to address this, and he said, Alexis, it still hurts you, and it still bothers you, and while you're helping me heal and express my truth, you need to tell your truth, and you need to start healing, because it's the same people that hurt you that also were involved in hurting me and exploiting me and taking advantage of me. So I thought about it, and when I started looking at the players, I, I said, wow, some of them are the same. Because if you go back and look at that Princess and Diamond video, now see, one thing I wasn't going to say, you know, I'm, I'm like, you know, ATL, peace up, A-Town down, the dirty south meets L.A. I'm cripping and dripping in this bitch. I'm representing King Nip and this Queen Drip. I was talking about the good players and the bad players in L.A. I wasn't going to mention the dirty motherfuckers in the ATL. But since y'all had to put your motherfucking self in it with this bitch attacking me, then y'all dirty motherfuckers down here can get it too. Now, I'm not talking about the regular people that love me and support me and some of the industry people that love me and support me. I'm talking about all the dirty motherfuckers that I see, that I mentioned, like Princess and Diamond, who working with um, Solange, and they said she came up with the concept of the Vagina Power Group. And then, if you listen to Princess and Diamond speak, Diamond, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, we go back and listen to it. Diamond says that, oh, I knew Nipsey and Lauren. So then the God, Charlemagne the God says, oh, so you was friends with Nipsey? He said, she said, no, Nipsey gave us some clothes, but I'm really friends with who? Lauren. So I'm thinking, okay, I was devastated when I heard last year, some people that love me and support me called me and said, Princess and Diamond are trying to steal vagina power, trying to steal your shit. And I was like, no, nah, what are you talking about? They're like, girl, they was just bragging about it on The Breakfast Club with Charlemagne the God. Saying that they came up with the concept. They've been touring with Solange. I'm like, not nah, my girl, what? They're like, yeah, we're touring with Solange bragging that they performed with her and, and that, that she came to them in Atlanta when she did concerts in Atlanta. And that hurt my feelings too because Solange didn't even say hello to me when she was in Atlanta. But Princess and Diamond were bragging that she spent all this time with them and filmed them and showed them how to de come up with a vagina power band. I'm digesting that. This lady's telling me this on the phone. She's like, you, you think I'm lying? They just did it. In New York with Charlemagne this morning, she sent me the link, and it's on YouTube, and I watched it. I was so hurt, and I was so shocked. Thank you, Nikki. That my mouth had dropped, and I didn't know my mouth had fucking dropped when Diamond said they came up with the concept. And then Princess jumped in, and they all said, yeah, we came up with this together. You know, this is me and her. We just, and he's like, oh, really? And you could tell Charlemagne kept, the way he was looking at them, he kept asking because at first he didn't really answer. Like he knew some shit was up or you heard of me or something. Because I know a long time ago, Angela Yee used to play clips from me like in 2007 and 2008. But Angela Yee wasn't there that day for the interview. So nobody asked them, where did you get this from? And they said it was them. They were like, well, do you know a lady in Atlanta? Nobody mentioned me. So I'm, I'm hurt like these younger women could do this to me. You, you literally conspired to basically take my whole identity Everything that was my birthright and my blood right that God gave to me and get out in the public and say that you two just thought of it, named your album, some nerd, named your album Vagina Power and said it came from you, act like you didn't know me until when she did Charlemagne the God, then people started asking them underneath there. Now, before we say something to you, did you really come up with this or did you not know Alexis K. Tyler came up with this? Then they backpedal and said we want to pay homage to the lady that created this she's on public access alexis k tyler here's one of her videos 
But at first you said that you made the shit. Let me get my tea. you said you made this shit up you that y'all both was bragging to Charlemagne. oh we on girl power we're on women's empowerment we want to start a whole new movement this was last year august 2019 on the breakfast club with Charlemagne the god thank you Donna. Oh, we're, we just came up with this concept and idea, and we worked with Solange, and we had to hurry up and go in the studio. I mean, I'm not saying this. They're saying it to Charlemagne, the God. And I don't think they repented to God. They're still playing this shit out. I said they were getting ready to go on a world tour with their idea and their concept and their Vagina Power album. You can go listen to it on YouTube. You think I'm lying. Just type in Vagina Power album, Vagina Power music, Princess and Diamond. You will hear this garbage. Nothing deep and metaphysical and powerful about it. Now, so the um, Hip Hop LA did it to you. I teach... Spiritual sexuality, vagina power, penis power, sperm power. I teach you about portals, chakras, and auric fields, the metaphysics of sex, vagina healing with your man, the science of sperm. I teach about the whole etheric anatomy, and I can draw it because it was given to me. So I know what vagina power chakra, I know what vagina chakras, penis chakras, I know what sperm looks like, I know how it elevates and it moves in semen. Seminal fluid. They are semen moving in the fluid. And it, it just, I, I was like, wow, I would never have the nerve to say that I came up with someone's concept and idea and name it the same fucking thing that they did get out in the street get out in public and say me and my partner and my friend thought of the whole concept of vagina power nobody thought of this but me vagina power music we're going to go on tour and in case you haven't checked i also do music and i have it on my youtube page with my son well, we wrote, directed, and produced music. So I also have Vagina Power music. You know, but I'm just now, as you know, getting well enough to come back. And I thank God I'm back because they were just going to basically take this. Rip me off. And they've never said hello to me. They're from Atlanta. I'm from Atlanta. Never acknowledged me until people in the public forced them to do it. I said, this is really yours. I know you know Alexis K. Tyler. Everybody knows Alexis K. Tyler. That's the OG of vagina power. She came out of public with this in 2006. Yeah, I'm not going to deal with that right now, Pamela, but you know the answer is yes. I'm not going to deal with that right now. I'm just going to watch this. I've been watching them to see how far this is going to go. Because they're clearly bold and dirty and cold-hearted as fuck. But I see who you're connected to. So you have no integrity. It's clear all of you bit women in the industry, in this business, are hoes and sluts. You will do and say anything for a dollar and go to the highest bidder and hang with niggas for money. You're looking for your next check, your next deal, your next opportunity to be big and famous. Because they haven't done anything big in a while. Trying to get their name out there. You will step on any fucking body. So you choose me as what? The mark and the sucker. Like your buddy... Lauren did Nipsey. Because Diamond made it very clear she's good friends with Lauren. So I already know how your mind works. You're treacherous as hell just like her. And you'll do anything for a dollar to get attention. And then get out in public. Now this is not a spirit reading. I'm speaking facts here. 
This is what she said in the Breakfast Club. That's your friend. That's what you said. And you called her by name. Laura London is my friend. And then seeing what you did to me, what you two tried to pull off on me that ain't went nowhere, oh, it's clear you're friends. Then I see she's connected to what? Her teacher that I also met and knew that stole from me too. She told she tried to steal vagina power from me too. Let's see, did we start in 2008? I was told she was going to come on me from somebody that used to be in her student in New York that said she fucked over them. A lady and her daughter said she fucked over them, okay? Which, when I was talking to her son, he verified because I asked about why are these people saying this and they don't fuck with you and your mom no more. So, the first night, I interviewed him. We got on the phone. He's like, hold on, someone wants to speak to you. It was like, what, 2008? She gets on the phone. Well, I like, and she sounded so, you know, it bothered me because I looked up to her like a mother full of wisdom and respected her. But I ain't know her. I just had started hearing from like one or two people down here because somebody interviewed her at Public Access when I was there. She came to People TV. She's probably never going to admit it, never told you that she knew me. They, all these people in this industry you think I don't know me, they're going to act like they don't know me. And I'm saying I do know her. And I'm saying I did meet her. In Atlanta. I'm, I'm telling you on camera that I did. But you know, I'm a liar. You know, I pop Molly and all of that. So, yeah, that, that's, that's who I'm talking about. That's exactly what I said. I met her. Lauren's teacher. That's what I said. She know, I'm a liar. But I'm willing to look in the camera and lie to you. On camera. She just probably never told anybody. First thing she starts doing is charming me. Seducing me. Oh, Alexis. Hi, beloved. It's easy to get lullabied by her. She's smooth. I love your work and, you know, a lot of people in New York love you and you're so creative. You, you know, you just come up with all of these wonderful concepts and ideas right off. I don't even know her. Hadn't met her in person yet. I met her here in Atlanta 2009. I've been talking to her. She gets on the phone. I didn't ask to speak to her. She takes it from her son and says... Oh, you're so wonderful and so talented. We should write a book together. We should write Vagina Power together. Since it's your brand and we get together and do it, and I add my side, you add your side, and you write the forward. And then we go on tour, and we talk about this. This is going to be a hit. I'm holding the phone, and I'm, I'm I said... Okay, well, you know, we can talk about it. Because I'm saying to myself, I don't even know you. I, I just, what, you got on the phone like five minutes, and now we're going to write a vagina power book together? And I write the forward, and I put my name on it. Why? Because I had a lot of fans, and I was viral. 2007, 2008, on YouTube and all the internet, and people were playing me, and I was being on TV and all these things. And she said, um... With your name on it, and you got so many fans, you know, it's going to sell if you write the forward and you endorse the book. Okay. So, I'm listening to this, and I'm like, wow, I mean, like, I don't even know you. I don't know anything about you. Um, hadn't read your books. Not a vegetarian. None of that. So, I don't owe any of my life, health, and strength to you or following your... Your concept, nothing. We don't know anything about that down south. So, I'm just like, okay. Why is this lady just feeling like it's comfortable to just come off on me like that? And then tell me, this is what you're going to do. And, I mean, that really asked me, just, we should write this book. I see a book. And you know what triggered it? 
when she was talking to her, the baby mama on Mother's Day, listen. Go back and listen. Remember how she said to her, there's a book in you. I see a book in you. I said, why is the same thing she said to me? Except I already have a large fan base. And my teaching and my name, nobody ever has not done. I mean, they try to say the power of the P and all these things after me. But nobody's ever called their show Vagina Power, then or now. So I was the first one to do that. And then the deeper concepts that weren't just about meeting anybody, fucking anybody, jumping into bed with anybody. I've never taught that. I taught Vagina Power, and it comes from a spiritual place. Hey, Trina. And standing in who you are and getting to know who you are and heal the wounds and the pain of childhood and trauma from men so that you move from a place of power. And I noticed when I didn't do that, they got vicious to me. <laughs> Thank you, Trina. I'm like you. Got vicious to me. Stop speaking to me. And then it was, and then let me tell you what I realized. She wasn't writing all of these books. That's right, Cornelia. Motivation and sensuality. I love that. She was getting her helpers and little flunkies and people that live there messing with her sons, uh, kissing her ass, want to be up under her, uh, consider her powerful and wanting to be around her, say they know her and they work for her. They were going out doing research, looking at other books. Yeah, me and you were doing Vagina Power in 1999 in the streets of the ATL. And, you know, I had them old cassette tapes taping my lectures. And you were trying to get people to listen to them in 99. You're right. I was trying to get people to listen to them in 99. And the church women weren't feeling me. The black women weren't feeling me. They said I was nasty and raw and they didn't want to hear it. So you're right. We was in the streets with cassette tapes. A vagina power in 1999 and 2000. Yeah, LaDonna, I didn't know why he had chosen me. And I asked him. And he wouldn't answer me when he first got here. And then I figured out who he knew. We had enemies in common. And people laughing and talking in our face trying to use us. The same motherfuckers. I didn't know it when he came in here last year. And then he graduated started to tell me. And I was like, Nipsey, you are so goddamn messy. You are bringing up very painful memories. That I haven't dealt with being used and abused and played on. People act like they love you and they like you. They really don't. Every time somebody has gotten close to me in the conscious community. Or period. Even in the entertainment and talked to me about television show deals. Or some other kind of deal. It was always acting like they loved me. And then when it got down to it. And they thought I was stupid. Because I'm from the south and I have a country accent. They thought I was dumb. And because I let everybody know. I'm not ashamed I have a GED. I don't have any college degrees yet. So they thought that they had the ups on me. And that was I was a dumb bitch. Like the bitch said yesterday. You know what made me really get into this? Because Nipsey been saying, you got to tell. You got to tell. And they said, you're lying. And this ties to the credibility of what I told you. When you bring up these same people. And they say, you're lying about that. He's like, Alexis, you know. Even if they say you're lying, say it anyway. Everybody, eventually, you do your footwork. Even if they say I'm lying. Eventually... The truth will come out if I'm lying on this lady or not. Why would I sit here on camera and fucking... I mean, I know people lie because I see how they lie to say that my stuff. Thank you, Pamela. That 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 I was lying and, and had, you know... Uh, oh, don't listen to her. She's not talking to Nipsey. She's lying. Yeah. Okay. They said I'm lying, but they nothing that I said was a lie. They still can't prove that I'm a liar. So now I'm adding this to it that I didn't want to. And he's like, Alexis, you, you, you can't be afraid to tell this. And I say, but this, I'm just, it's just very painful. And I just feel like every time these people come to me, they always try to, like they love me at first. And then they try to fuck me and steal my shit. It's happened a lot. Every time they come to me, they don't really want to do good business with me. They want to act like they love me and act like they want to do good business. And then they fucking steal. Trina saw it. Like she said, we've been rocking since 99. I saw people did that, and I don't want her over here. She can't come over here. No. And then men, I don't want her around my woman. Because she, you know, she going to turn her again. Oh, because I wake her up? 
And I'm turn her against you. She can't come in my house no more. Trina saw me being treated like that down south. It's just like we, as years go on by, now they're ready for me. Okay? You can see the clip of me being on Mari on YouTube. And I was also on Tosh.0. And Lee Daniels used a clip from my segment on YouTube called Penis Power in the movie Precious. Where Monique is in there. You have to listen for it. Where I think Monique, they're in the living room and her daughter's washing dishes. And it's like the TV's playing. You can hear my voice. So some of them do know me. They just don't talk about it. When I saw that she had other people and women going there, young girls, or people that looked up, some of them were older too, and they just like, like this lady's God on earth. They're going and plagiarizing shit out of other people's books. Because I think one of my friends was telling me today that it's a certain amount, like 20, 30% of something you can plagiarize from somebody and legally get away with it. She's putting other people's books, stuff in books to put the books together and then put her name on it and say she wrote it. When other people were collecting information from other books and then put it in, put it together for her. She's not literally sitting down writing all these books. Just like her ex-husband Phil Valentine said that he wrote Sacred Woman. And she went behind his back and got it copyrighted and didn't put his name on it, just put her name on it. And that's, you see, that's been her top seller for years. That's like the biggest book that she, and I don't, I mean, you go ask Phil Valentine or, I don't know, I wasn't there, but that's what Phil Valentine said. She told that. So I saw that shit happening to me because when I said, nah, I think I'm going to pass on this one because I was told I couldn't even read the book. It was another book she was also writing. I said, well, can I read it if I um, put, if, if, if I'm going to write the forward, if I'm going to endorse this, can I read it? What you said? She was like, no, uh, but I can get the girl that's helping me write it and you can read the forward. Uh, you, she's like, you can read the, the name of the chapters. And I'm like, I don't even know you. So, like, why would I write a forward and endorse a book, put my name in there, and you said I can't read the book. So I'm just like listening to this, and I'm like, I don't even, I don't know this lady. And then, again, it's on YouTube. I'm asked to do this for somebody that I don't know. It hasn't helped me in any kind of way. I, I didn't ask you for anything. I don't even know you to ask you for anything. And it's like, write out, do this for me. Or write this for me. Oh, you, we, we're going to, um, exactly, LaDonna, we, we're going to co-write this. And then we're going to uh, promote this. And we're going to, and I'm just like, uh, yeah, Daphne, that's what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Next thing I know, that's like, what, 2008, 2009. In 2010, you see she wrote a book called Healing a Wounded Vagina. Because you know she couldn't say vagina power. She never even used the word vagina. She never wrote a book with the word vagina in it. Until after you saw I came out and I was hot and everybody was checking for me. And the young people and the rappers, all of them were liking me. And then you met me, you asked me about it. And I'm like, no. Because I don't, I don't know you like that. Let me get to know you first and see what you're about before I decide to put my name in something that you're doing. I don't know anything about you. And it, it went behind my back and did it anyway. See, somebody just said in the chat that he said he wrote Sacred Woman. See, and, and next thing I know, it's out, and I don't think it sold that well because my name wasn't in it. I didn't endorse it. I didn't write anything in it. But one of my girlfriends, when I posted it tonight, she has the book, and she's the one that told me about it. I said, oh, so she did put something out with vagina in it and tried to push as if she knows about vagina power and she can teach about healing a wounded vagina when you just fucked me, basically. And you say you came up with it, and everybody knows that you didn't. You've been out a lot of years, like, what, 30 years more than me. You've never mentioned the word vagina. You don't even talk like that. You never said anything about vagina power. You never talk about portals, chakras, or nothing like that. And now, all of a sudden, you, this concept, the spirit gives you vagina, healing a wounded vagina. And it's after you meet me, because I think it's on the date, 2010. You had already met me. 
and spoke to me about it. So you can't say you didn't, I mean, well, yes, you can say she didn't know me. She never met me, but she did. And my friend called me and she's like, you're not going to believe this. I said, what? She said, you realize that Queen of Four wrote a book or plagiarized the book. We know she didn't write these concepts and come up with it by herself. And sit, called it Healing a Wounded Vagina. She's like, and I'm looking through it. And it's some of the terms you use. Like portals in the vagina. Dealing with the different layers of the self. It's like a lot of little words she used. And the way she described things sounded like shit I say. And she's never... Talk about nothing like that. And everybody knows that saw where she got it from. So that's another person that I told you about. That was around Nipsey and works with who? His baby mama. All these people is in this shit together. From Atlanta to New York and L.A. Yeah, overcoming anger, anger vagina. I put the copy up there on my book. And, and you know what? That's the cover she showed me. I saw it before she put it out. And she was getting the other women to help her put the manuscript together. But in public, she'll say she did it. I ain't worried about nobody copying me. Because I, like I said, I am that drill. I am the originator and never motherfucking duplicated. You can try, but nobody can ever describe and teach that shit like I do. Because it was given to me. And nobody can draw. I'm going to re- I'm, I'm going to start working on it so I can release it. So we'll see who's the deepest. And who can really say that shit. And talk that shit. Because it's mine. And I, I, I thought about that. I said, wow. So... Princess and Diamond... You have no honor and integrity, and you were told to do that to me. And you agreed that you wanted to do that to me. So that you could get this new audience, now that the audience is ready and dealing with feminism and girl power and pussy power and woman power, you're going to ride on me, excuse me, not even ride on, completely steal. And then I guess to get ready for their tour full of lies, Saying that because she went and got a ass implant and wobbling her ass, a big ass, on two little bitty table legs. Little like this right here. A little bitty leg, a little bitty ankle by this goddamn big with a big implanted ass. Diamond. Got an ass implant. I get that with both to be. To pop your ass and pop your pussy for your vagina power tour. You done got them stole from my ass. I mean, that what they say. Show that dancing and popping with a new ass implant that they done put in, not no shot. Like a whole shaped silicone ass and mold it in her ass, but then the lead lip. Yeah, some to Ikea furniture lead. Look like a TB patient by the leg with a big shaped up fake ass. Thank you, baby. And I'm 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 listening to this and they said she was up there wobbling it last year, trying to wobble it with the ankle by that that bead right there. When it this big on the ass. See Mama D had said her pussy stain when she was with Lil Scrappy. And that she wasn't no good. She was a gold digger. And Lil Scrappy said that she was with him until he ran out of money. Then went out there and got with Soldier Boy Teller in L.A. and had a show for a little while. The diamond. They didn't really go nowhere, but she went, Prince went with her with diamond. So you do look like you. And said he had gave her a fake ass. They did an ad transplant then. But I guess I don't know if he had went down or collapsed, like the mole into her little bitty leg. So they just, they said she just got a new one. They pulled the old one out 
not that fat transfer, but a, a, a silicone ad and put it in so she can wobble in the vagina power with some two little panties. You can see it on YouTube. See, I'm thinking. Rapping, call they sell. Call they sell, like my grandmama them say. Call they sell, represent vagina power. And, uh, yeah, but it would collapse, but they pulled that one out and they gave a new ash in there and said it, it, it look, don't look like it match the hip, the thigh, and the leg. And that the calf too little. See, I don't, look, I don't know. That's what, that's what they say in that line on the screen. Yeah. I want to talk about vagina power. I mean, the treachery of this these women is amazing to me. And like I say, all the one did it to me are in Nipsey's camp, doing that shit to him. And now we are we are the women. We are the healers. We are the women's. We are the healers. We are the dick suckers. We are the stealers. We're the dick suckers, we're the stealers. That's more like it. That's more like it. Of what y'all do. Okay, let's say that Dama. Yeah. I'm not one that gossip, but said they got a no candy problem. See. And that they pass arounds. They pass arounds in the industry. Fucking producers sucking. I believe it. Because if you would do something that dirty to me. And then I even seen people. And I met people that know them. And they said, well, you want to try to talk to see. Want me to call them and see can we meet and talk about this? And I said, yeah. Because I cannot believe these bitches had the nerve to do that to me. They could have picked anybody to do that. But they did it to me. And I noticed that. A couple of people that said they was talking to them and bringing it up to them. I even seen some people on, what, Twitter last year asking to talk, them to talk to me. They said, you know, this is, why, why don't you ask Alexis K. Tyler to go on tour with you or to be on stage with you? Because this is hers and you know it's hers. And one of them said something like, mm, that's a thought or I think about it. And they never said anything to me. And I know they fucking know me. And then... When the person that I know in the industry, she said, oh, I know them. An attorney. She said, I know them. Let me get with them and see if they want to work this out. They would not speak to me. That's why I know that you know what the fuck that you doing. And you know that I know that you know that I know. And everybody else know that you took that from me. And they tell you they dirty as hell. That's what people say, LaDonna. They dirty, not dirty. Dirty as hell. Because why don't you want to talk to me about this shit? You using my shit, the, my whole name, for my movement. Put you two or three songs together about you. Shake your ass. And take a dick like a vet. And keep your pussy soaking wet. That's what she said in one of the songs. Take a dick like a vet. Keep my pussy soaking wet. Well, if you a veteran, like me, if you a OG, then you like me. You write your own shit. And you like Kaya, you write your own shit. That's what I do. Come up with my own idea, my own product, my own concept. And nobody's ever come out and told y'all I stole a motherfucking thing from no goddamn body. Try to take my whole concept, my life, my blood, my sweat, my tears that that came from. And that came out of my pain. And you would think you're going to steal my pain for financial gain. You got me fucked up. God damn it. I'm all the way fucked up. Hey, Hafez. Because I think Hafez was with me when I spoke 
at Howard University in 2010 in the medical center. And that's the same year that motherfucker got some people to help her put that shit together on me, that book, to my healing a wounded vagina. Libation. My goddamn cigar. Cause I got to take me a smoke on this motherfucking shit right here. I mean, goddamn like this motherfucker, man. And you know I ain't did this in a while. You know people that from the back in the day know me. They know when I put them black gloves on. And like that goddamn cigar, there's no hose bars in this bitch. But I hadn't done it in a while because it's really not good for me, you know. But, but this shit been so heavy on me. And he told me to tell. And I was like, Nipsey, why I got the... He said, Alexis, you got to tell. I have been asked, you got to tell. It's okay. You 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 got to tell the truth. They can keep, let them keep calling you a lie. But they got to see how the same people did that shit to me. Is the motherfuckers that fucked you first. Some of these similar people, if they ain't fucked you directly, they dealing with the motherfuckers. That did fuck you. But people have to respond to legal teams. When you get a subpoena or something, you have to respond to a legal team. So it's not if they, oh, that got that if they, and, and that dumb shit, that doesn't matter. You're going to have to, or somebody's going to have to respond on your behalf. But see, I'm not even talking about that. You know what I'm saying? I haven't pursued anything legally against them. I, I haven't done that. I hadn't even mentioned this to y'all. A lot of y'all didn't even fucking know. I wasn't going to say anything. But seeing how these events, events are evolving and developing. And I see the same players coming up around Nipsey that's coming up around me. I'm like, God damn, this shit is amazing. And I'm sitting here, I didn't know it at first. And as I start to put this shit together. I have a copyright. And I have a trademark. People can still try it on you. There's rappers that, and, and, and songwriters that write songs every day. They have them copyright and put them out. And motherfuckers still, just like Sophia Stewart of The Matrix. You, you, that doesn't scare nobody. People get stolen from all the goddamn time. I, I have. If I didn't have it, they would, would have gotten further with it and been able to really rock that shit. Like I told y'all when I did the show the other night, ask them. Ask them about me. Ask them, did they come up with that concept and that idea before I did? Ask them, do they have the copyright and trademark to show you? And then, let's flip that. If they came up with it and I didn't, why didn't they sue me for using it? Huh? Why didn't they send me a cease and desist? Because it's mine. Because it's goddamn mine. That's why. And they tried to take it from me and boldly sat up there with Charlemagne the God in front of the world and said that they created the goddamn concept until people started to ask them did you really do this? Do you know who Alexis K. Tyler is? And then they changed it. Thought to change the tune. They said now did you really write this now before we get in your ass? Did you? Hmm? They see they thought backpedaling Roshana. You see that, didn't you? Well, you know we want. We want to pay homage. Mm. So, I mean, you, so you do know me. You see that shit? Y'all see that? Oh, wow. It's purple. Whoa, it's like an orb or something came up out of there. Give a libation to the ancestors. Nipsey. Jackie. Shine. Eliza. Mm. 
It's so gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I know, I didn't do that. They do what they want. <laughs> they do what they want. Child, I took a few years break. I was so ill. I took a few years break from 2013 up until, I think, what, 2018. My first reading I did was on R. Kelly. I was just experimenting to see if the people wanted it because they didn't know I had that ability. And, you know, that's the thing I think about as well. When I was around these people and they were doing that to me, they didn't know that I could see them. Yes, the moon's tomorrow. I'm going to be teaching the class. Oh, thank you, Kimberly. They didn't know that I could see them. That's why I said no when they were propositioning me with shit. They hacked my account more than one time. Threatened to kill me and everything. That was with vagina power, too. I'm being still for these shots for my girl, LaDonna. <laughs> so she can get some nice pictures. I have, to, I have to do it slow for her and be still. You know what, LaDonna? I, 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 I mean, La, La, what I'm talking about, LaSandra. LaSandra. She told me to be still and do them slow so she can get some nice shots for me. Um, I think, LaDonna, I think that a lot of things are allowed and that in the right timing the ancestors will deal with it because everybody has their karma has their path has their walk so they're allowed to do certain things and certain things play out that's all I can say I was just glad I was able to see them when they didn't know I could see them and it wasn't as bad as it was but I took it very hard I mean even you know it's been painful even up to now like I said when Nipsey came into my life and he was saying, you, you have to heal as well as me. You, you have to deal with this and release it. And you have to let people know how it ties into my life and what happened to me. Yeah, but I had an issue with him too. We fell out and he started to blackball me and start talking about me uh, because of a show that I didn't show up at in Atlanta when he came here to speak because he refused to give me a contract and he refused to give me a deposit. So as a result of that, I'm like, I'm not going to show up with anything if you don't handle business with me correctly. And because I have been cheated by so many black people and so many conscious people before. So I'm like, nah. And then he trashed me and other people started trashing me because I wouldn't show up with him doing good business with the contract, uh, not a verbal agreement because I don't know him. I didn't know him. At first, he was wonderful to me. Y'all, you know what? There's a lot of shit I can tell y'all, man. It, <laughs> Isn't it pretty? She has a guy so pretty. Yeah, I, you know, I just hadn't gotten into these things. And Nipsey said I had to. Can't keep holding these things and people just keep trying to tear me down and destroy me. And what, what really made me, my mind up is when that lady did that to me the other day. Because LaDonna, I think LaDonna found it and other people found it. That lady that attacked me is tied to celebrities in Atlanta in the music industry. 
and in the rap industry. So it's clear that somebody in the entertainment industry knows that bitch that threatened me about $40 in bottles of oil that I know she's gotten uh, by now. You all have the tracking number. You can check it. When y'all started showing me she was who with Young Jeezy, I think it was that the rapper Young Jeezy, and some other people, entertainment, and in politics, Atlanta politics, I said, okay, well, y'all can get it too. You know what? This shit that I've been holding back and how they've been fucking me, the same people that are buddies with Lauren and the four have done what they could to fuck me. I see they all know each other. So let me go ahead and let everybody know who I really am and what I really know. And how I know some of these people personally. I've been around them. And that's something that I have to still deal with and release because I looked up to them. Just like I looked up to her like a mother figure. Like a true classy goddess until she started talking to me and I started seeing the spirit on her to remind me of my mother my birth mother anybody that reminds me of my bio mother I already know they ain't got nothing good for me and it was give me this give me that write this endorse that and I'm like well I haven't even known you five minutes just like she was in that video with Lauren I chased you down I chased you down and I said, ooh, take this right here and tell everybody to buy it. She's like, well, you know, if I tell them, you better have issues. I, I, but I guess they have a different type of relationship. She didn't do to her what she did to me. The same way she said she did her, chase you down, tell you. It's, it, that's, how she, that's how she did me. Oh, give me that phone. Yeah, this is what this is what I want you to do. This is what you got. And I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, not me. Now, until I, 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 I see what you got to say and I really get to see what you're about. Or if you're only trying to play on me because I don't know you. Let me meet you. Let me talk to you. Let me be around you. She wouldn't do that. She didn't want to do that. And when I wouldn't, and I'm like, unless I know you, I know the agenda. What am I getting paid? She didn't mention anything about paying me. She was, she was going to get paid. I was just going to do it out of love and respect. I don't have a reason to love and respect you because I don't know you. You're not where I'm from. I'm not where you're from. I don't I don't understand. I don't owe you any loyalty. I don't know you. Backed up from that point. And I wouldn't do right out of the gate what she wanted. Couldn't manipulate me. Couldn't control me. You weren't offering me anything. Then it's like my throat was cut. And I was blackballed. Then a little bit after that. Let me see what. That was 2008, 2009. I kept doing my show. Um, that didn't work out at all. And I saw it wasn't going to work out if I wasn't going to be pimps up, holes down. If I wasn't going to play the whole position, it wasn't going to work out. I, I started figuring that out very easy because everybody around her, if you ain't contributing and you ain't doing what she say or endorsing her, get her money, she's not using you to make money, you're not going to be her friend. You're not really her friend. You're not going to be, you're useless. You're going to be discarded. Okay. When, when, you, you, when you're not going to do but she tell you everything's about her and making her money and that pimping. That's her family's about pimping people. As, and I and that's what I grew up. That's the kind of mother I had doing the same thing. So I could I could see it. And I don't want to be treated that way because I have never used anybody to create my concept. Nobody ever wrote for me. Nobody directed for me. Nobody produced for me. That's why. Hey, that's why when you look at the Vagina Power Show from the old. Um, Public access, my sets don't look that good. Everybody else's sets look better because they have a producer, a writer, and a director. Okay, Because when I was there, nobody wanted to work with me. Nobody wanted to help me in my show. And so I had to literally lock the cameras down so they could stay in place, one position. I didn't have any nice furniture. I didn't have any music, anything like that. I had to do the best I could by myself because nobody wanted to see me succeed. Yeah, LaDonna, that's what she does. And that's like one of the ladies uh, at first when, you know, I tried to hint at it earlier and they were like, uh, uh, you know, last year, you know, a few months ago, oh, she's not, she's not like that. You know, the baby mama's like that. She's not like that. That's a sweet old lady. A sweet old lady. 
That's a good lady. Read her book and everything. Don't say that about that lady. That's a kind lady. Lady ain't do no shit. Really? Do you know her? Are you just saying it because of the public persona and you bought the book? Do you know her? Because I do. I know you didn't know that. No, not you, LaDonna. This other lady that said that's not true. No. I got her book at home. That's not her. No. I was like, wow. And you, y'all are spiritual? You're spiritual? So when you do your readings, you're not neutral to listen to the spirit, whether you like someone or not. You have to be neutral. Yes, LaDonna. You see that? She had been around... The whole time. <laughs> and this lady got so upset. She was in tears. And I don't say that about it. And I was like, okay, but this is what I know. I know. I'm not. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to shut up. I'm going to say that. And Nipsey kept telling me that I, I better. That I had to. Because I don't know who's listening or who needs to know. And I'm still holding back a lot of shit. That I'm not telling. I'm trying. I'm trying to be discreet about this. Because this is still very painful to me that I met so many people that I looked up to and so many older women I looked up to and tried to learn from them because I didn't have a mom. I didn't have a good mom, and then to get treated that way and exploit it or trying to exploit or prostitute it just like my mother did your set was basic but your subject content was made well yeah Pamela because I didn't have a choice so I had to make it raw I had to be captivating from the neck up and I had to make it fun and interesting and educational what they call it, edutainment educational entertaining ed educational entertaining and funny because I didn't have a backup. So I had to win because everybody wanted me to lose. I had to find a way to do that. Yeah, Megan, but you know, I... This happens to a lot of people. And a lot of people become drug addicts and drunks. And um, throw their lives away. feel like they're nothing. Because people in power treat them that way. Treat them the way that they treated me. So it's it's been difficult until Nipsey came into my life. And when he, the more he talked, the more I found out, I was like, get the fuck out of here. Wait a minute. Excuse me. We got a lot of players in common here. We got a lot of people in common here. And he's like, Alexis, you have to, you have to do this for me. And you have to do it for yourself. And this is like two, three months he's been asking me. I'm like, I can't do that. And this, I can't. He's like, you have to. And I was like, wow, so that's why you picked me. It's one of the reasons he came all the way to Atlanta because when he did and I saw how all a lot of people we have in common that fucked us or that set us up for that and tried to. I'm absolutely amazed. And since I talked to you the other night, I've been thinking about this. And he was talking to me about it and I, my mind was blown. I said, wow, so. Okay, because I saw Solange with Lauren and Queen of Fua when they did the Puma breakfast and Aunt Solange was holding up Queen of Fools books telling everybody to buy the books. So I was like, wow, I didn't know that. <laughs> that all these people are buddies. Oh, it just did it now? Courtney went split. Yeah, I feel him here. And he said, look at that. And I was like, Oh, so no wonder I'm getting treated like I'm being treated. And then I see Princess and Diamond is in there, and they in the clique, too. <laughs> mm. Okay. So I'm like, yeah, this is making, yeah. Yeah, Daphne. But I didn't know that. I didn't know the connection with the Puma baby mom. I, I, didn't, I didn't know all them was connected and buddies. So I was like, and then the the two here, Princess and Diamond, and then the Vagina Power group. I'm like, wow, so all of them know each other. 
So no wonder I'm getting fucked. No, no, no wonder I'm getting treated like I'm being treated. I'm not going to stay that long. I, ju I just want to share that with y'all because I got to get ready for class tomorrow night. You know, it's, it's, it's in the uh, Alexis K. Tyler Vagina Power 2020 class. I can't be up all night tonight. And that'll be uh, live and that'll be available for people to pay. Even if they want to pay tomorrow or after, they'll still have access to the taped show. We're teaching about spirituality, sexuality, vagina power, penis power, introductory to chakras and auric fields, and the attraction oils and vagina healing with your man. I mean, we're going to touch on these things. And what I decided, since people asked me, we're going to have a um, once a month at least. They want a class once a month. And what I'm probably going to do, it, 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 it'll be cheaper next month because it'll be a half class. Instead of a three-hour class, it's probably like an hour and a half class. So for people that said they couldn't afford this one, I'm going to just shorten it. Thank you, Courtney. Yeah, but you know what, Courtney? I, I agree with Nipsey, though. It's like if I didn't speak my truth and if I didn't deal with what happened to me and if I didn't release the hurt around that and the pain around that, then I wouldn't be able to, you know, move forward and do my work. So this is, you know, he kept talking to me. It's very liberating to me. And he said I had to release that. I had to get that hurt out of my heart, you know, and forgive and release it and free myself and just learn my lesson and don't look back. Don't look back. But that still doesn't mean, because I've held it and I didn't speak on it, all for what, since 2009, 2010, 10 years. And he said, but you have to now to let that go. So, and yeah, I think so. But I also want to share it with you all to help you all to, to look up to some of the people I mentioned. Worship some of these people. They're just humans. And a lot of them are, are in a position they're in or make money or do things because they fucking someone. Literally fucking and sucking someone and then literally vampiring off of and fucking someone by taking their brand, their look, their style, their teaching, their idea, their philosophies and principles and shit. Right. Thank you, Adonis. It's only for me. So I can be free and move forward. They're fucking them on another way like they did to me. That's why I had to let you know because I want to make sure, and I'm going to say this, I don't care how nobody take it. Those two, Princess and Diamond. Do not need to have a successful world tour off of vagina power. They don't. And we need to let everybody know what they did to me. If they have a successful tour, let them create their own style, their own title. But you didn't even take one word or trip around. You use a whole word, vagina power. And you said you created it in the dirty south. I mean, we all, I mean, it's so obvious. No creativity at all. You just straight stole the concept and tied it around sex. Who does that? Me. You, you didn't even change it in a way. You, you put it in music, but I also have music. If you look at my trademark and you see the category for it, it is for a TV show dealing with Comedy, news, entertainment, and music. And you can go on my YouTube page. I did some music with my son. I love the arrogant video I did with him. He's done music. I talk shit on his, and we use it for the show. Because it's a variety show that I don't have a trademark for. So you're really not doing anything much different than what I do. Just no, just with shows, they're, they... They're not innovative. They have no creativity. Because you just straight jack my shit. And said it's yours. They shouldn't be able to prosper by stealing from me. Everybody needs to know. Okay? Well, this one girl told me I had it wrong. We that I do not have the murder hornet. She said they blew murder hornets, goddammit. it. That's what she said. They blew murder hornets. <laughs> Show me get it right. So you know what? I 
think we need to come up with a t-shirt. What do you think? I gotta work on a t-shirt for us. Because we got two now. We, we got the Messy Crew. We got the AKTVP Crew. The Vagina Power Crew. Now we got the Blue Murder Hornets. <laughs> so we all in one. We got our own three secret societies. Thank you, James. Yeah, and I haven't seen anyone yet come up with the concept I have for my show. And even come up with the spiritual and the metaphysical principles of spiritual sexuality, vagina power. Nobody. I can sit out. It's in my head. When I was in New York, 2010, I spoke. I paid for my trip. I paid for the lecture place in Manhattan. And these people from, oh, Kayla Donna, I love it. Crippin', Blue Murder Hornets. This, <laughs> they crippin' and trippin'. <laughs> and these, this lady from New York had contacted me and said, oh, we're fans, you know, and, and, and I shouldn't have done it. I was stupid to do that at the time. I, I've never done it since. She said, oh, I'm a fan. You can stay at my house and we'll help set the lecture up and promote it. I stayed there and those people in New York and some of them were blood gang members. They stole my footage from my show. First, they told me we're going to tape it. We're going to take care of it. We're going to tape it and we're going to give it to you. And then we're going to network with you and help build your brand. It's going to help us because we're a production company and we have the state of the art production and filming. And then I said, uh, after I taped it, I said, OK, I got to fly back to Atlanta tomorrow. I can't change my date. Can you come here, which to the lady's house who was friends with them, which is clear this was a, a scam, and said, um, I said, can you bring me the footage? I'll even pay you, even though you don't want me to pay you. The guy then says, no, I'm not going to come and bring you the footage. I decided that I'm going to keep your footage. I'm not going to give you a copy of it. And if I give you a copy of it, we're going, and I was teaching on the metaphysics of sex. So, they, I didn't, something told me, don't do diagrams, don't do drawings, don't do illustrations. I just taught on it because it's, it's in my head. It's, it's in my DNA. Taught on it, so they taped it, and YouTube took the page down where you could see the clip from the show. That's all I had was a little clip. They held my footage, and this girl is listening because they were her friends. So I knew she was in on it. Told me, yeah, I don't, I don't, I mean, it's done now. You know, that was the first and last time that happened to me. Luckily, since I own my copyrights and my trademarks, I own them in 2010, you will never see it out on the street. You'll never be seen it sold in the street of New York. And they, you will never see any store pick that up. Any reputable store would not pick that footage up and sell it. I haven't seen it online. Even people that love me in New York have been looking for it. It hasn't been online. Because I own the trademarks, and that's trademark and copyright infringement. And I never did a contract to say that you can film this and you can take this. You, it belongs to you. No, that was the agreement was giving it to me. And then he said, you know what? I'm not going to give it to you. Uh, if I give it to you, I'll give you a copy. And this is what you're going to do. Here we go with the pimps up, holes down shit. You're going to go to Atlanta because I know you can sell it. It's yours and people love you. You're going to sell it and we're going to do a 60-40 split. And every month, you're go you remember? Mm -hmm. Every month, you're going to send me a 40% cut. Of everything you sell. I said look. I don't have a problem with you selling it. And getting your own money off of it. Because you taped it. Give me my copy. You can take your copy. You know. I, I'm a fair person. I wasn't trying to take advantage of anybody. That was, I said you can sell it. Whatever you make. You don't have to tell me. What, what you make. Your, yeah Megan. Your money is your money. My money is my money. You can take it and sell it. I don't, I don't care. Because it, it, it's mine. And, and the rights belong to me. But you can get your money. I get my money. He was like, no, I don't, I don't want to have to work hard. No, you're going to sell it. And I was like, you got me fucked up. Now, I can't make you give me the copy. But this is what I know. You'll never be able to put it in Blockbuster any store. You'll never be able to get a deal selling it. And you won't be able to sell it on the street because the New Yorkers that love me, we're not going to buy it because they know how they got it. Okay. So I said, one thing I do know, I can redo that, and I'm going to redo that for you all, and I can make it better this time, because even though it was 2010, it was 10 years ago, it's in my head. I remember what I taught. I remember what I said. Why? Because it's in my blood. It's in my DNA. It was given to me. There's nobody on the planet 
that can take vagina power that was given to me and teach it like I teach it. Walk it like I talk it. And draw the diagrams. I've been watching, and even in that book you saw, she couldn't do it because it's not hers. And I, I learned a lesson from that. I was devastated. Whatever, when I gave my word, that's my word. And I thought when these people gave it, it's, oh, we love you, we're fans, you can stay here. I lost a lot of money behind that. And when I spoke to New York lawyers, well, it wasn't about being super sharp then. What my problem was, I was a nice person. And being naive because I was a nice person taking people with their word. And I don't do that in my real life. You can't do it. So, you know what? It's a lesson. It broke my heart. But, you know, I'm I'm over it now. I'm better. But because of that, I don't I don't fuck with people. Um, no, I don't fuck with anybody from Brooklyn. I don't I don't fuck with niggas. I don't do nigga business. I don't I don't do nigga shit. I don't trust niggas. Any black people come to me talking about, oh, we're gonna do this for you, we're gonna do it. I don't trust. Word ain't bond. My word is bond, I know that. But these people's are not. So that was a lesson, a very expensive lesson that, that I learned. And at the time, I had no sponsors. So all the money for my plane trips, paying for the venue, uh, my food, my tech, all that was out of my own pocket. Like I always do. I work and make my own money. I don't ever trick nobody. I don't fuck, I don't suck. I don't try to play on nobody, take nothing. Everything you see that, that I sell and that I teach is mine. But I, And I thought everybody was like that, but everybody's not. They're looking for ideas and things to steal. They're looking for nice people like I was with a lot of light in you that is innocent and you're trusting because you give your word. That's what it is. And, and I just wanted to believe that black people were like that. And I realized cause that's what they were saying. They're not. They hit even. I remember they took me out to dinner like the night before they fucked me. Took me to a nice restaurant and then turned around the next day after the lecture and stole my footage that I never got back. Luckily... I own the trademarks and the copyrights. So they could not put it in the street. So it still belongs to me. It's just that footage doesn't. You see what I'm saying? What's inside of the footage belongs to me. I own the rights to it. And that's why I always kept my rights active. But since then, I never trusted anybody. I don't trust black people anymore. Because I know they all ain't your friend. Because they consider the same race. They're some of the biggest, filthiest scavengers that I've come across. You know what? To be honest with you, I cannot name a white person that did it to me. I've never had a white person do that to me. Never had a white person steal my footage and do that. Niggas did. Yeah, I know that's Hollywood. I know that. I've had white people do production and film for me. Just people at Tosh.0 oh, were very good to me. When I flew to L.A. to Comedy Central to shoot, they were good to me. The people at Mari were good to me. Mari was good to me. Very classy, very elegant. Anything I needed, I had a limo, everything. Niggas, they robbed me, raped me, and then told me, I'm going to pay, you're going to pay me to fuck you with no grease. And when I talked to a lawyer in New York City, he said, you have a case and you will win it. They have to give it to you. You know what these niggas did? They changed their phone numbers and their addresses and all of them got together, hid, and stopped answering the telephone, changed the numbers. And then the girl stopped talking to me and said, I don't, I, 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 I don't know what happened. Mm hmm and now I look around, I don't see these people, big stars or anything, behind what they did to me. That's why I'm like I am. I still have a good heart, but I protect myself now, and I don't do business with niggas. Unless we have a contract. And I still may not do it then, because people will do a contract and still f and make you go to court to sue them. So just because you have a contract, that still doesn't mean the person's going to do right by you. I go by the heart and the integrity. If they have integrity, I may sign one. But most of the time, I pass dealing with niggas. So I don't, I don't have that problem anymore. I don't run into people like that anymore. That was the old me. I don't, I don't have drama like that in my life. I don't have people trying to fuck me out of merchandise. I don't have people trying to fuck me out of contracts. Because I don't even work with niggas no more. 
and I don't, I shoot my own content, I write and direct now, I produce, I keep my shit to myself. There's only a couple of people I know that I can trust, and they don't do that. That's that, that kind of energy is not in my life anymore. So I set boundaries, and there's certain people I just don't let get close to me. I can see it now, and I trust my intuition. I started having a really bad feeling. And I remember I told a girl, I said, you know, I got a bad feeling they're not going to want to give me my footage. And I looked at her and her eyes bucked like she knew something that I didn't know. So I called them in front of her. I said, you said that they're your friends and you control them. They will make the, you, you will make them do the right thing. I knew then she was up with it. They had all set me up. But one thing I'm thankful for is that I got out of there with my life. Because they could have raped me. They could have killed me. They, they could have done dirty shit to me or said somebody else to do something to me. I felt like as long as I got out with my life, my health and strength, that I could start over and I knew they couldn't steal it from me because I, I legally, I was protected with the rights. They could just have the little footage and I knew they wouldn't get far with that and they didn't. To this day, they didn't. Um, and then after that, I was poisoned by a man in the conscious community who's, what? Also friends with the teacher, the baby's mama's teacher, who had a couple of health food stores in L.A., who poisoned me and then said I'd be dead before the end of 2013. If she were in 2020, I recovered. I almost died a couple of times because my body was so sick, but I'm here in 2020. Oh, yeah, they know they knew each other too. Mm. I know because he talked about her to me. They clearly, yeah, that's what I said. They clearly target certain people with light in them to vampire that they don't want to help. They don't want to build up to work with and partner with. They target certain ones they feel either have more gifts than them or going to outshine them or more talented than them or more intimidated. And they don't want you to get up unless you're their bitch. Unless you're underneath them because it looks like, well, I don't dislike this person. I'm not hating on this person. But really it's like if you can't beat them, join them. So, If I can't beat this person head to head while they're on their side and I'm on my side, I'm going to then try to come to them and collaborate and act like I'm working with them. And we co-write books. We do lectures together. But really, you don't really like me. You clearly don't like me. And you don't give a fuck about me. But you will act like you do and get up under me so you can keep your enemy close. And you can watch me. And I'm in your domain where you can fuck me. Fuck over me. We do collab books together and shit. We do lectures together. You're taking my money and you're keeping me close to me, to, close to you, to make sure I don't rise without you working on my own. And everybody think we cool. But you know in your mind, you don't like me really. That's how I feel. You don't give a fuck about me. Because I see the outcome of it. I see these two in the group. And I see the book out and shit. I didn't know my friend sent it to me. She's like, did you see it? I'm like, I have heard about it, but I, I think I might have seen it briefly, but I remember seeing the cover when she got somebody to design the cover. And I thought, well, if I don't collaborate, she's not going to do that. She, she did it. Tried to push that by herself, and it flopped. Because real recognize real. Y'all are not stupid out here. Y'all got plenty of sense. Y'all are starting to wake up and see who's real and who's not real. So, it, it, you know, after people listen to this video, I don't really care if you believe me or not. You can still deal with it. You can buy the book. I put it right there. You buy, you do, you want. It's not going to matter to me one way or the other. But what I believe is, over time, the truth will always come out. If I'm a liar, that's going to come out. If she's lying, that's going to come out. So I'm not going to worry about what anybody thinks or says about what I said. If I tell the truth, not. It just doesn't matter to me anymore. I still had to say it. Ah, I started to get it off my chest. And I feel better. I feel like a, I feel Nipsey, but I feel like a release in him. I feel like a peace. 
I feel like a piece. I feel like I did the right thing. And I hope you all understand the connections I was trying to tell y'all about. Like the, with these people, how they are in common. And they do the same thing to everybody. So I saw that I knew, yeah, you said a lie travels around, around the world twice before the truth even gets dressed. Yeah. And I hope that um, people that need to see will see. I just say that I didn't say, you know, anything sooner. I probably would have continued to just hold it and feel bad and blame myself. Um, but if, if, like I said, if Nipsey hadn't come to me for reading, it never would have came up. Okay? So that's it. That's all. Yeah. At least that's all I'm going to go into tonight. Because I do need to get my curriculum together uh, for the class tomorrow night. I'm not on the bottom I'm on top I'm doing what I want to do I'm running my own business I'm well my body's healing I have my own companies I have my own products I control all of my production I would never nobody would ever get close enough to me to do that to me again like I said that was in 2010 that was like 2008 2009 2010 that was 10 years ago nobody's ever done that to me again because I don't deal with people. I don't partner with people. I've learned to be secure standing on my own. I don't need to. No, I'm already on top, Candy. I'm already on top in my world, in my business. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not having any issue. I'm, I'm not dealing, like I said, what I'm telling you is 10 years ago. This is, this is not going on right now. Yeah, we see Princess and Diamond, but they're not really doing anything to me. I'm, I'm just watching them. I'm going to see how far they go with this. And then decide what I'm, what I'm going to do. I mean, I'll talk to you, James, privately about this. But as you can see, I'm not even really angry, angry. I'm angry, but I'm not angry to the point where I'm screaming. There's no need for that. I'm, I'm going to watch them. Like I watched the teacher. And I, and I see where that went. Nowhere. Because she cannot stand in front of anybody and teach vagina power. Or teach vagina healing. Healing a wounded vagina. When you're wounded to douche to fuck over people like that. You and your crew go around. I see all the celebrities around. And I just mentioned a couple that I know. That trying to fuck me. So I know this is, this is obviously what you all believe you have to do to people. To stay on top to fuck everybody. And then leave them wounded after you vampired on them to pick up the pieces and do the best they can to move on. Yes, Courtney. And that's why I had to learn. I had to be, maybe that wasn't for me to be in these groups and be accepted by them. Maybe it's for me to heal from all the things I've gone through and learning to stand on my own. That's what I finally do now, learning to grow up, heal my wounded little girl, and stand on my own. No hurt, people don't hurt because I've been hurt all my life. And abandon and abuse on my life as a child. I don't go around fucking over people. As a hurt person, I don't go around hurting people. I came up out of the mud by myself. And I built everything on my own merit. I didn't ask nobody for nothing. Didn't fuck, suck, didn't cheat, lie, steal. Even when it was difficult and I didn't know how I was going to fucking eat. I still did this on my own the right way. So hurt people don't always hurt. That's not true. I decided to be responsible and heal myself and not go around doing shit like that. Even though it was easy because I saw people like they get what they want when they do the wrong thing. They fuck over everybody. And I still, it was more harder for me when I was a good person. Everybody still want to fuck over me. But I still didn't sell out by being hurt. And I could have. You're still responsible. How you respond to things, how you treat people. That's not a justification for fucking someone over who didn't do nothing to you. Because you're a hurt person. That shows you have no lack of intelligence and integrity and there are character flaws in you to do some shit like that. Every time you get the chance. I don't do that. Anyway, I'm going to go. This is late and I need to get something to eat and I need to get myself together for my curriculum. 
is they trust me and they paid me and I have to honor that. But I didn't want to get this. Yes, Kelly, it is a choice. Especially if you're an adult, it's a choice. If you're old enough to reason and ration and you choose to go that way because it's easier, that says a lot about you. And I'm going to watch you and the way you do, I never do business with you. The way these people have done me, these particular ones, I, mean, I never do business with them. I never sign agreements with them. Because it's clear how you feel about me. How you don't feel about me to do some shit like that. And you won't even have a conversation with me. And you know that you stole it from me. <laughs> All of them brushed me off and started ignoring me once they did this to me. That shows you don't give a fuck about you. You're just finding victims of vampire on to step on to get where you want to go. When you do shit like that. Yes, narcissistic psychopath. Yes, and sociopath. And sweet and rolling off your tongue like honey. And say what people want to hear. And you start, you know you're going to start it quickly while you think the person admires you. You're going to start right up front and start asking for shit. Because by the time they pick up on what the fuck you is, they're going to turn on you and not going to give you nothing. So either before they cut you off, you're going to hurry up right up front. Ah, we, I, see, I see a book. We we need to co-write and she see why this good. Hurry up and get it quick. For the bitch get slick and wake up. By that time you gone, you got the fuck you wanted, and you on to the next vampire, the next bitch, or you got ten or fifteen lined up. That's just how they do. They don't fuck about you anyway. You only valuable to me, and I, you only mean something to me when it benefits me. That's basically, that's basically what it is. Like a narcissist. And then the narcissistic discard when either I don't got what I want because you wouldn't ever shit to me no way or I can't get what I want. You're discarded like a piece of trash. No, I'm not worried about anybody. I'm just sharing what I feel like people need to know. And people need to sit back and observe and watch. I'm not worried about anybody. Thank you. Snatch and grab before they wake up. But anyway, I'm going to wrap this up for now. And I'll be back. I don't know when I'm going to be back. I'll try to be back because i got to finish Nipsey's reading. And see if he has anything for the part two of the Mother's Day thing. Because you know what? This is still an extension of the Mother's Day thing. Because I started, I really started to learn a lot. And he made me think a lot. And I, that's when I started to see. He's like, don't you see the people in common, Alexis? I started to think about it, and I was like, oh, you're right. You're absolutely right. He said, you have to tell them. So they, so they can go and look at what you're talking about. They can study and be quiet and observe what you're saying. So this is this is an extension, because I'm still talking about the same people, if you notice. I'm still talking about the baby mama. And she's buddies with the two that did it to me. She has to know. All these people have to know. But yet, these are the people you need to look up to heal you. We are the women. We are the healers. We are the women. We are the healers now. We are the women. We are the healers. But you do stuff like that. And you associate with and do business with people that do stuff like that. But you're a healer of women. Hmm? You see what I'm saying? That's why one of the reasons, too, he wanted me to mention it. You're supposed to go to these people for healing, women. But I'm a woman, and y'all did that to me. You see what I'm saying? And some of these women is old. I don't want all young women, they're different ages. Because there's a lot of old, dumb, motherfucking, calm, guzzling bitches out here. They call themselves healers. That you did, that I used to look up to older women, thought they was all wise. They not all wise women. Because they older and they not healers. A lot of these fuckers sick. I remember being around some of them in the project. They have children. And one thing you need to look at, whenever... A woh got a son up on he can't do nothing on his own. 
you know, we're living with and depending on taking his mama, but then he seemed like something conflicted of the mother's very domineering over the son and controlling the son. It, it's, it's something off between the relationship with the mother and the son, or the son don't have no respect for the mother, but yet he feeds off of the mother. They vampire feed off of each other. I studied women that have sons. Because I remember waking, I remember, remember growing up, and it was this older woman that we looked up to. I didn't realize when I was like a little girl, probably going to become a teenager, like 12, 13. She might have been in her maybe late 20s, early 30s. And all of us young girls would hang around this older woman's house. We'd be on her porch talking. We'd look up to her because she was older. She seemed really hip, smart. We could talk to her. We couldn't talk to our mothers. She just seemed like a, a, a really sweet lady. So it was not only the young girls that were hanging around this lady's house. It was the young boys. But, you know, I didn't know anything. So I didn't think nothing of it. She was fucking them. She was over there eating pussy and sucking dick. And I never, you know, because cause I wasn't having sex as a teenager. So I, I didn't really know what to look for. I just knew that the young boys and the teenage boys would hang around her house like the girls would. And she would, you know, barbecue and let them eat there and hang out a long time. She had a baby daddy. So she had a little boy. And, and, and he didn't, I don't know who his daddy was, but all I know is, she was very dark skinned and had some short hair with some nappy roll up cooker books in the back, like spaced out in the like here and there. And some on the top cut short and had it low around the side. And I know that the boy was real light skinned, but had them pop ass eyes, just like his fucking mom. But she, you know, he might have genetically got them pop eyes from her. But I think one reason why she probably got them pop ass eyes from taking them dicks in her mouth. And taking all them dicks, like, rushing down in her throat, shocking her throat, or fucking her in the ass. <laughs> shocking her ass, all them young boys with all that long dick up in her, probably knocking her fucking back out. Because they were real pop. And her teeth, and her, she was built up like a goop goblin. Had some long, big long titties, about two stomach, and her ass was real flat. But her stomach was real goddamn big and long. By two or three stomach wrapped around her side. They were hanging off her hip with long titties around her navel. With some gathered up teeth in her motherfucking mouth like a damn goop goblin. And one of the young boys was trying to talk to me one night and he say, I like you, I want to talk to you. I, I said, okay. And he was about 16. So he was maybe a year or two older than me. And he said, you know, I, I be over Trisha house all the time. I said, I know. I see you over there. And I don't know why he told me. But he was like, I be fucking Trish. I said, what? He said, you didn't know how you see all the young boys over there? I said, but she got a boyfriend. She said he be at work all the time. I be fucking her. And she be giving me money. I said, what? He said, yeah, she a paymaster. You didn't know she. He said, I'm not the only one. She be fucking her son and friend. And I said, but she, uh, I said, but see, I realized, like, I now, age ain't nothing but a number, and looks don't fucking matter. She ain't got to be cute to me. She ain't got to be cute to him. That money was cute. And he said, I like, he said, I don't like her. She ugly as hell. He said, I like you, and I, I like your look, and I want to date you, but I deal with her. He said, some gathered up, real sharp, brown teethies. And some big pop ass eyes like she can they open up real wide when them dicks going in. So she I will talk about fucking, but you know, we just thought, you know, she just she cool like that. We could tell her anything. He said she be sucking my dick. He said, then she eat my booty hole. I said, What? You know, we ain't know that about that back then. And but we didn't know she was freaking that. He said, and she pay me. She give me that that little boy check every month. I feel like throwing up after I seen you fuck that ugly ass, funny, built up ass bitch. He said, yeah, cause she paid like she weighed. Yeah, she can suck dick real good and she eats my asshole, eat out my booty real good. And I was like, mm, I, I don't want to date him after that. Knowing that her mouth had been down and he, I said, you didn't do nothing. He said, no, nah, I didn't have to do nothing to her. She just liked young boys. So I just sat there and let her do that to me and suck all on me and eat out my booty hole and give me that check. He said, it's a different one. He said, it's a group of she do that too. 
I said, so you don't care? He said, no, because it's just about that check, and I like the way it fits. You know how to really suck a dick and eat her ass. I said, mm, okay. So one day her son was outside. He about they, they all about the same age. The boys didn't say nothing. Then he said, well, good. She could suck dick, and he loved the way she said. He should put her whole mouth down on his rectum. Ain't no rectal cavity. He ain't have to wash up or nothing. Just a stinking bitch. A nasty-ass, funny-built-ass bitch. But I guess, you know, she felt like she had to do that because she wasn't sex her up fine. And that's why the niggas, I wonder why, that's why them boys was hanging around all the time. She was paying them boys. And, and, and I guess as an older woman, initiating them into the, all the goddamn palatio. You know what I'm saying? She bringing them in. Showing them how to, you know, really tossing they salad. Yeah, tossing they salad and showing them how to really get their dicks up. You know, she initiating them, you know, as a grown woman. They got an older grown ass woman doing this shit with her ugly ass. So she doing that nasty shit. And I think my grandmother had started whispering about it when they hang up clothes. They started hearing that she was doing this shit. So the whispering started getting around that she met with them boys. And then I used to wonder now know why her boyfriend used to whoop her ass every goddamn night. Now we know why. She be out there next day hanging up clothes, black ass eye, lip bust, and she brag, oh, we got the fine, but I hung with his ass, y'all. We would see, like, back then, the probably, you know, we had them shades, them brown shades. Them motherfuckers look like they were dancing in the dark. You could see them shadows. Come on, come on. We see this, the shadows. So we be out at night, and you could see them upstairs with the light on, shining off the goddamn shade with no crap. Going back and forth, then she come out, face fucked up. Eyes fucked up. Now I know why. Because he was hearing the goddamn rumors too. So one day, her son was out with these same niggas who she eaten by five or six boys booty. Sucking them and giving them a little bit of the chick. So they, her son started Joan and the boys. What we call Joan and, you know, playing the dozens or booking, you know, depending on where you come from. They Joan and they playing the dozens. He talking about they mama and, oh, I fucked your mama, this and that. And then it got, the shit went left. Because they said, man, I've been fucking your mama. She sucked my dick and eat my booty hole. And then other niggas said, yeah, we fucking your mama too. And she sucked all of our dick and your mama eat out our booty hole. I don't know, but something about what they said to that young man rang true. He didn't, for some reason, something in his nuts and his gut. And his butt believed these motherfuckers. That man started walking. That young man started walking real fast toward the goddamn house. He rushes in on his mama. And I have never seen him disrespect his mother, hit his mama. That boy picked that funny Bill Uncle Festo body looking ass bitch up and slammed that motherfucker into the china cabinet. Back. First, slammed the back of her head, that little piece of ass, and her whole back in this, I'm talking about a tall, big china cap, not a small one. The big wooden one with the glass doors and the dishes on it. When he slammed that motherfucker up in it, the glass broke, and the way it cracked, the whole shape of the motherfucker was shaped like her funny built ass. Shaped, the, it was molded off, like her ass was molded off in the goddamn China cabinet, the way it broke with the glass pushed in. You know who body it was. It was shaped like the back of her. Just straight back, straight down with that funny built ass egg head with that little bit of hair in the back. When she got up, it was shaped just like her. That baby was so hurt. He didn't even ask her why or why you fucked them. The little boy no. He know she did it and took off on that ass. And then people were like, Trisha, why yummy, why yummy um throwed you in the china cabinet, Trish? Why your own son picked you up and body slammed you in the china cabinet, Trish? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to talk about it. See, she already know because she told me she was a fucking them boy. She fucking them boy. That the, and they went in Joan and told him about it. He went in there and whooped her motherfucker ass. See, I learned about that. Because I'm telling you about these women that did this to me. With old bitches, young bitches, and in between bitches. Trusting them. And a lot of them was doing shit like what I just goddamn described. 
So now I see why they would steal from me. Because they have character flaw. They don't have no motherfucking integrity. The same one that up here conscious and pouring libation and slapping their hand on the goddamn park lot out there in the marathon and shit. A lot of these people don't have no integrity and have character flaws. And they pretend to be something that they're not for money. And to play on people, make you think they something, one thing, but they really do scandalous and treacherous motherfucking shit. See? So I've been seeing this shit with women, fucked up women with character flaws, pretend to be something that they not, and spiritual and shit, since I was a little girl. Still hoping, you know, that, that for the best, that everybody wasn't like that. There was a difference. Still keeping hope alive. Now, I'm not like Jesse Jackson, goddamn ass man. I'm not with the Rainbow Coalition shit. I don't have hope alive no more. I treat people individually based on what I fucking see. And one thing I know that all black women are not sacred and motherfucking divine. I'm going to look right through you. And I'm going to judge you individually who you are and who you're fucking not. And even if I can't prove it at the time, if I get some fucked up shit about you, I'm going to stay the fuck. Yeah, she's a predator. Even if boys would do that to you. Because I noticed when my son was in high school and all those young boys, and those were nice looking, well built young boys that would come to the door and knock for my son. When my son wasn't here, I wouldn't open that door. Because I don't want to put myself in a compromising position because I don't mess with children. But I knew them little boys would holler at me because they wanted me to say something to them. And so I, I didn't, I didn't open, I just speak to the door, baby, he's not here. And then they start, one on, one night, got extreme and start throwing rocks at my window. Upstairs, so I went, look, I said, yes. And I said, I told you my son wasn't here. The next day, they, my son jumped on him and I said, why would you do that? He said, mama, let me explain something to you. He said, the nigga knew where I was. Okay? The nigga knew I went home. He think he slept. Because some of these mamas that I know are friends of mine be fucking them young boys. And he said, hell, I done hit a few. I said, boy, you fuck somebody mama. He tell mama they want to fuck me. He said, so they probably thought that you, you was going to do that. And I said, no. And they said, he said, mama, I know you. When I said, I didn't open the door. And the boy went and tried to start talking to the window, and they, he whooped his ass. I said, why you do that? He said, because, Mama, you don't understand like I understand. He said he was trying to hit on you. He knew that I was up the street around the corner. He acted like he didn't know because he want to get at you. Because that some of us is fucking some, each other, Mama. And I said, boy, don't tell me that here. He said, some of these women, Mama, be fucking us. I said, you know I'm not going to do nothing like that. And so they got into it. He said, because he knew what he was doing. Y'all, come on. Man, this happened in every neighborhood. You got older men, turn out little girl, and you got some of them older women getting that young stiff Peter now, letting them young boy break their bag. Come on now, teaching them how to fuck. A lot of young men want an older woman to teach them how to fuck. Teach me how to dug it. Teach it, teach me how to dug it. Everybody love it. Everybody love it. Teach it, teach me how to dug it. <laughs> Throw that ass in the circle. You know what I'm saying? I just never participated in no shit like that. <laughs> but I saw it. I, I saw a lot of that going on. Anyway, y'all, I'm going to go. I get myself together for my school tomorrow. And I just want to spend a little time with y'all. Um, I know I'm sure it's late. And I, don't, I don't really want to talk about this no more. When I finish a reading with Nipsey, I'm so busy right now with all my stuff I got to do and all my merchandise. Thank you, Sydney. Yeah, I love y'all too. Thank y'all for being here and listening and supporting me and buying products. And thank y'all for patiently waiting. Some people let me know they got their stuff today. Uh, thank you for the people that are patient. They're still waiting. I got to wrap. Yeah, I love y'all too. Wrap it up. Yes, yeah, James, you know what I'm talking about. You're a man. And, a, and you're a handsome man, so I'm sure you're good looking as a young boy. You got those young older women that'll let you know. They'll teach you how to dig. They'll teach you how to throw that pee. Throw that, throw that, throw that D. Throw that, throw that D. Throw that, throw that. Yeah. They'll initiate you. Because most of a lot of women, older women are good lovers. You know, and, and they know things young girls don't. A lot of men, that's their fantasy, to, to, to be with older women, to be with MILF, mothers I'd like to fuck. 
So I'm, I'll be back soon, you guys. I got to finish packing and thank everybody for loving me. Most Everybody, I say 97, 98% of everybody is patient and they wait. They know I have to make the things from scratch. She let me use her stuff on the show. I'm going to send it to her tomorrow. And, uh, okay, remind me, Shauna. Now, if you didn't get your stuff and you ordered like three weeks or a month ago, uh, please remind me because sometimes I get so many orders I forget. So a lot of times people will go in my inbox or go to my email and say, I just want to check in. Was it, was it shipped? Did you forgot about me? You told me to check in. I don't get mad when people check in. Did you send it yet or did you, you might have forgot? Because sometimes I really do forget. And as soon as they send it, I'm like, whoa, I forgot. Let me get, give me your name and address again. And I'm like, wow, I didn't send it. I'm sorry. I got so many orders. I don't remember everybody's orders. And like I told you the other day, I don't let anybody touch the orders. So I'm, all, I'm just going, going, going with so much stuff going. So if you didn't get it yet, and Shauna, did you just order it or is it old? If I owe you from a few weeks ago, please check back with me tonight. Let me your address and what you ordered. Okay, whooping an old bitch about mine. See, I couldn't whoop the bitch because my son wouldn't tell me who the bitch was. That's why I know that older woman pussy was good because my son to this day still won't tell me. So you, you should, see, if that son liked that woman, that older woman was sexy, and that older woman that's is sweet to that boy Young's dick, you ain't going to know who it is. You ain't gonna know. I ain't never gonna know. I ain't never gonna know. You see what I'm saying? He won't. He to this day he won't tell me. And then he told me she was fine. He said, "Mama, she was fine. She was half black and half Hawaiian." Mama, I hit that ass. And I said, "Who?" He said, "Mama, I ain't gonna tell you." I said, "You dirty little yellow motherfucker, you." He said, "Mama, it was good though. I ain't. You know what I mean? I ain't. I couldn't get no relationship. You know, cause she was older. I ain't know what you would say or what you think." He said, but my mind, I don't, I don't want you to know who she is. I don't, I don't want you to say. See what I'm saying? He gonna wait to tell me when he get grown. That'll tell me when it was going on. He said, mm mm, she was bad. He said, but have I fucking your friends at that why? Cause they, I'm gonna let them do to me what I did to them. I said, you know my character ain't like that no way. Yeah, but I, uh, uh. I said, you ain't going to tell my name or the friend name? Uh-uh. He won't tell me even the nigga, the little boy name that will come. He don't want me to put no pieces together. <laughs> oh, my God. I love y'all. I can't even be all this reading, you know, because we're talking real life. This is not something I'm alleging to see in the spirit, so I'm not getting disclaimed. This is something I know, okay? This is what I told you is what I experienced. Because it wasn't a read. Wasn't something I picked up on the spirit. No, this was. I, why I'm gonna beat him, Ladonna, when he done got his dick sucked and got fucked, and I don't know who the lady is. He still to this day won't tell me. He, why I'm gonna beat him up and he just, you know, around again his dick sucked. Yep. <laughs> they still gonna fuck? It's like somebody t tell good night. So somebody you get some dick and somebody tell you, you better not fuck no more. And you get your, your mama whoop your ass because she find out you a teenager and you done got some good dick. And they gonna stop your pussy from throbbing and want some more dick? Hell no. You see the right nigga, you gonna want some whole dick. See, I'm gonna whoop somebody. I watch it was done. It was done then. What am I whooping for? I'm going to go, y'all. I got to get up and get get my work. And I got to finish packing as many boxes as I can because she, her uh, ass going to be on me tomorrow. Is they ready to put a car? God damn. Why you got to come? Shit. Sorry. I, I, I love y'all. I'll talk to you all soon. Uh, good night.